All right, so uh, I'm delighted to be here. I had an opportunity this morning to moderate the earlier panel and just uh, uh, delighted to see that Search Engine Strategies is back after a four-year break. Uh, so uh, legal consulting groups help organizations develop, deploy, and uh, measure their uh, digital strategies. Let's go ahead and uh, move into the pitch here. On, on, uh, so what am I doing? Here we go. So this is a couple of things that I want to talk about uh, today. First thing is, uh, as we go through the slide deck, uh, take a look for the green light bulb. Those are things that uh, are going to indicate uh, that we're talking about something relative to the Latino marketplace. So a lot of my uh, comments today will be in order to set up the two publishers that are here, world-class organizations, and I'm delighted to be on a panel with each of them. Uh, so I'm going to be talking mostly in very strategic frameworks, and then I'm going to be applying those frameworks to the Latino marketplace. I've got uh, another section of this presentation here on some observations and frameworks about how to segment. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through the engagement cycle and purchasing cycle and how that differs from some of the uh, traditional uh, mainstream behavior. All right, so why analytics? There's a little bit of a delay to it. Okay, really, Folks are engaged in analytics for two reasons. They want to learn and they want to take action. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, ways to do that. Uh, you can use dashboards, use alerts. Uh, you, you want to start with a hypothesis in the beginning of any uh, assessment for what you're trying to accomplish. And it's important to begin with the end in mind. Uh, analytics has a tendency uh, to, uh, to have a, a very high return on investment. So I actually want to compliment you for having come into this room as opposed to the Facebook room where they're still trying to figure out how to make money because uh, in this room we're going to learn how to do it. Uh, and uh, Forrester did a report a few years ago, uh, actually not even uh, about 18 months old now, that indicated that organizations that either bring in a full-time analyst or that outsource their analytics work uh, receive a 1,200% return on investment within the first six months. So when you have a website, be it a publisher's website, B2C or B2B, I'm going to try to cover all three of those. Uh, I think when, when things first start getting assessed, the question is, well, you know, we should just throw a lot of stuff out there on the wall and see what sticks. Uh, so let a thousand flowers bloom, bloom. And when Forrester did some research, they, they asked folks, well, what are you measuring? And the responses came back when I'm going to say caveman analytics, you know, page views, page depth view, uh, time on site. Uh, but this was the, 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 the takeaway here, the golden nugget from uh, that particular report was uh, where are you getting your highest ROI? And uh, what metrics do you use to track the ROI? So it was things like the number of leads generated, cost per lead generated, click through rates, and the number of campaigns launched. Uh, those were the old, uh, th those were what I'm going to call caveman analytics. The real answers in terms of what they were saying was the most useful for them were, were their campaign return on investment, the customer profitability, and marketing contribution to sales. What does that mean? It means that we can s have a direct correlation between the source that was run on Google, the source uh, in terms of an ad that might have been run on Yahoo or another uh, banner and have a direct correlation to what happened in my CRM system. And, and uh, that's pretty powerful. Customer retention uh, and customer satisfaction were very high as well. So if you jump into your analytics data, don't do time. It's time consuming. Uh, it's, it's a crime. Matter of fact, uh, Avinash, who speaks from Google on analytics, uh, uh, has made the comment that analyzing data in aggregate is, in fact, a crime because it is time consuming. So segment, then analyze. Things get a lot clearer in that garden uh, of information. So if I were given an hour to save the planet, I'd spend 59 minutes defining the problem, one minute resolving it. Albert Einstein said this, begin with the end in mind. Understanding what you're trying to measure before you begin the journey is critical. And there's so many organizations that just don't spend the time because thinking counts. Uh, spend the time to understand what is it that you're trying to accomplish. What's the purpose of the website? <coughs> So I'm going to give you five tips on how to split that garden out into methods that are going to make real uh, sense for you. So the first is needs-based segmentation. That's going to improve your ROI. Understand the four different ways that we can traditionally segment. 
Uh, language, obviously, is an easy one uh, on the left. And the further to the left, the easier it is to accomplish this. Uh, firmographics or demographics, if you're BBC, so geographic coverage, okay, great. For Latino, that makes sense, I understand that. Uh, one company we're working with, we actually were able to overlay all of their traditional sales, just regular sales in the U.S. Took that data out of Salesforce, and we overlaid it with the top 50 zip codes in the United States where Latinos live. Then we segmented that out, and we ran some ads oriented in those segments in those uh, zip codes. So that's a, a nice little tip there for uh, firmographics behavior. Well, and I have some slides here. Uh, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of some of the different characteristics in terms of how Latinos behave online. Uh, so in our case, it might be the sense of community, with brand loyalty, we over-index in a lot of these types of uh, statistics. And lastly, need. Uh, well, again, need, uh, in terms of how that works for Latinos, uh, is again going to be revolving, is going to revolve around uh, what uh, characteristics that online media is allowing us to use in our normal and everyday walk. We already are a very social uh, community, and so social media is allowing us to just exp express ourselves in ways that we uh, hadn't been able to do before. The further to the right you go, the more difficult it is to replicate. Tip number two, use segmentation maps. Segmentation maps, what's that? Well, this is something that we worked on for an organization that sells new homes. And we help them understand the different dynamics of why people buy from them in those different segments, and then how they can begin marketing to them. So you'll notice out there on the right, uh, of course you can segment uh, by language, is another uh, of the variables. And when you put these together, let's take a look at a more specific example here, a segmentation map. Uh, this one was we built out for each segment, we will build out one, but in this case we use it for, for young couples. And what we identified here were these are the characteristics. So as we begin developing Google Ads, banners, the creative, the landing pages, the promotions, here's the map. And so within the variables, we have a very clear understanding of how we want to pursue each segment.